Hello and welcome. We are going to talk about essential oils today. And but first of all, I want to introduce myself. It's Prasanna Diana Manuela, international speaker, pre feminine prosperity creatrix, and international best-selling author of the book Elemental Woman. I support conscious and creative women entrepreneurs globally to awaken their calling, lead with wisdom, and leave a legacy. And today I'm interviewing Wendy Mackay, who is a professional accredited aromatherapist with over 20 years experience, founder and director of Essence of Wellbeing and essential oil formulator and educator. Now I have worked with Wendy before because Wendy has actually created our archetypal oils for Elemental Woman seminars, which everyone absolutely loves. They're beautiful anointing oils that we use to embody different archetypes to really step into feminine power in, in our business. So now with this coronavirus around the world, um, we have this desire, or I have this desire to share maybe a little bit of a different information to what you hear every day in the news. Uh, there is so many different ways we can support ourselves with and also be aware of things that maybe we shouldn't be doing. So today I want to welcome Wendy uh, to this conversation. Thank you so much, Wendy, for being here. Oh, thank you, Prasanna. Thank you for inviting me. It's lovely to have this little chat with you, especially something about something like essential oils, which I, I love so much. I know, I know. And you can see the beautiful factory that's in the background there. That's the showroom. I've been in there many times. Yeah, that's right. So, so pleased. So, um, Wendy, how can we use essential oils to help us at this during this time right now? Well, there's probably a number of different ways that we can use essential oils at the moment to to sort of support us through yeah. the, the current situation that we're in. Um, essential oils um, act in a very holistic way. So they actually behave, um, can have effects not just physically on us, but also mentally, emotionally, energetically as well. So there's a number of different things that we can do. Now, Obviously, there are going to be um, the, the, the current virus that we're dealing with. Most of the symptoms people are having is to do with the respiratory system. So we have essential oils that are going to be very good for things that are connected with that. And if we do happen to have, and we're also here in Australia going into winter months, which tends to be a bit of cold and flu season anyway. So we're kind of getting hit from a couple of different directions. So we can use essential oils to support us with, with um, our, our respiratory system. Mm -hmm. So things like, you know, coughs and, and, and congestion and things like that. Some of the best oils for that include things like eucalyptus, um, pine, tea tree, and also things like uh, peppermint as well are all great for helping clear and soothe some of those symptoms that we might get. Obviously, if you have severe symptoms or you think you might have been ex actually exposed to the COVID-19 or coronavirus, then you should be consulting your doctor as well, obviously. But at home, for some of those little sniffles and things that we might be getting, some of those essential oils can be really, really helpful. But I think we can also use essential oils to help support us mentally and emotionally because that is, I think, some of the biggest challenges a lot of us are having at the moment. We are living lives that are unimaginable, would it be unimaginable and unimaginable to ourselves six or 12 months ago. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yes. And I'm, I'm kind of interested that you mentioned the lungs and the coughs because from an elemental point of view, now that we are in the Southern Hemisphere, have moved into autumn or fall, that's basically what happens. It's the lung energy becomes more active in that time. It's like the, it's like the metal element. Is, it's the time for the metal element. And so lungs is one of those things. And emotionally, we hold grief in our lungs. So in autumn, people tend to feel more griefs as the leaves coming off the, the fruit trees and the autumn trees. There's kind of a letting go and the energy goes deeper into the earth. And so it is curious that now in the Southern Hemisphere, we are dealing with this really strong virus that impacts the lungs so strongly. So, um, so I think having some of those suggestions, how to deal with grief and how to deal with the lungs from an uh, essential oils perspective, I think uh, is great. It's interesting that you mentioned grief too, because I think that's what some people are experiencing is there is a sort of a, a sense of grief for the loss of the life that we've 
had. You know, we're doing things so differently now. People are uh, maybe working from home. Um, they, may be, they maybe have the kids around all the time, like 24 seven, where normally you'd send them off to school. Uh, you might have your partner at home where normally you don't see each other for a few hours every day. Suddenly they're there all the time. And that can put a stress on even the most, the strongest relationships. Yeah. And there's also that sense that we can't go out and uh, even though it can, everyone, you know, a lot of people connecting um, via you know, technology, we can't physically go out and be with other people in the way that we would have done before. And that can cause an awful lot of, um, of stress and um, anxiety, particularly. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I'm feeling that, you yeah. know, um, in, and I'm pretty happy, very positive kind of person. I really love my work and I connect with a lot of people from different time zones frequently. Um, and yet I've been really heart deprived, touch deprived. Mm -hmm. and again from an elemental point of view what really supports the lung energy is actually bringing joy to our lives right because it feeds the heart and of course we're now huck deprived we can't go to concerts we can't go and see a show in theater we can't go and watch the movies no parties no social gathering which all of the things that are hard uh, nurturing actions and and things to do we can't actually do right now so we have to find other ways to bring pleasure and joy and playfulness into our life to feed our heart because that actually helps our lungs from an elemental point of view I think that's right and I think there are a lot of people finding new ways and and new connections you know there are whilst having the kids home all the time might be a lot of stress. It also allows some wonderful opportunities to share learning experiences um, with kids that you wouldn't normally do. I mean, I think you homeschooled your, your children, didn't you? I did. I had 34 yeah. seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see, I, cause, cause that, that in itself can be um, a challenge because I, I mean, I didn't homeschool my daughter and I can only imagine if she was still that age, which she's not now. Um, I don't know where, I, I don't know where, if, if I know where to start with something like that and be, to be thrown into it so abruptly as a lot of people have been, means that we have to look at other ways of trying to support ourselves and give ourselves some comfort and some joy, as you said, in this situation. And that's where I think there are some essential oils that can really help us through that. Yes. Um, I think so too. I mean, I remember creating the, the five element oils with you and we did the, mm -hmm. the fire, you know, we did the goddess one, which is all about the heart, right? Mm -hmm. Good at the moment to really uplift and open the heart because it helps the lungs to not go into grief too much, right? Yes. And yeah, I remember we put some beautiful oils together. So maybe share a little bit more about that. What can we do to really open our hearts with essential oil? Mm. Well, I think if you're, if, if, if you're looking at um, what is going, it's important, I think, firstly, to connect with what's happening and yeah. to be able to acknowledge what's happening because there are a lot of different oils that we can use. And it, your choice of essential oil is going to depend very much upon what it is that's going on with you at the time. So if we take somebody who maybe is having issues with anxiety, stress, feeling very pent up, um, some of the oils I would look at are those that are going to be more relaxing and releasing. So things like lavender is obviously a classic. It's very, you know, obviously one we all know of as a relaxing oil. But I'd also look at things like geranium, which we sometimes call rose geranium, which is a beautiful oil that has wonderful balancing properties. I always think it's a great oil when you feel like you're swinging between extremes, which I think a lot of us are doing at the moment. We all have those bad days. And if we, even if we are very positive people, and even if we do try and look for the positive side, there are days when we don't feel like that so much. So being able to even things out a bit is always good. If things are feeling really um, overwhelming, I think an oil like Roman chamomile can be really lovely. That's a very relaxing oil. You know, chamomile tea is yeah. obviously something that is great at nighttime before you sleep, but the, the oil itself, um, it can actually be also very calming. And another oil that I absolutely love whenever anything stressful is involved is bergamot, which is one of the, the more gentle citrus oils, uh, but great for anything that's to do with stress and tension as well. And you don't have to use one of these oils. You can combine them in combinations that suit you to make something that actually you enjoy the smell of. And you can add any of these to a diffuser, have it around the house, 
um, or even just pop a couple of drops on a tissue mm. and use that to take a few deep breaths. Oh. And encouraging that deep breathing can actually help us to feel calmer. It's very hard to feel agitated if you get your breath slowed. Absolutely, very true. So another question here for you is, you know, our skin is the largest organ in our body. So what about putting them in the bath for us? So we're actually bathing, we're taking in through big amounts of our skin. Mm -hmm. Well, we can do that as well. I mean, it is important to remember to mix them into something first before you put them in the bath because they can be very harsh on the skin. So just um, use a, um, an unscented um, shampoo or unscented soap, something like that, and add your essentials to that before you put them in the bath just for safety. It is a great way of doing it because in the bath, you actually take the oils in two ways. They both going in through the skin, but also you're breathing the aromas from the warm water. And what I will say, the reason why I often suggest using a diffuser or using, using them on a tissue is that when it comes to the mental and emotional effects of essential oils, in my opinion, the fastest and the most effective way of using them is to inhale them because they go straight to the brain that wow. way. It's so yeah. true. Yes. Amazing. Yeah, I love it. I love it. But doing the bath is also a great thing because it is relaxing. It's a little bit nurturing and it's a great way to take a little bit of time out in the day for yourself, especially if you're surrounded by people, if you've got a whole family home at the same time, it can be hard to find those moments for yourself. So a bath is a terrific idea for just, you know, carving out those few minutes of the day for yourself to relax. But I was even thinking for the children, you know, because children, they have a very different daily rhythm at the moment. And so it may be more tricky to get them to bed. Maybe they're watching far more TV than they usually do or whatever. And you got, maybe they also need more winding down time. So I'm just wondering, you know, maybe have some chamomile and lavender or things like that in the bath. And before they go to bed, it could be, could be good too. Yeah, absolutely. And things like chamomile, lavender, mandarin are probably my, my favorite kids' oils. So they're suitable for most um, children um, and again make sure you di you dilute them before you put them in the bath or, or use a dispersant to put them in the bath uh, but yeah part of that bedtime routine I think we all benefit from a bedtime routine I we often do it for our kids when they're babies but we forget as they get older and we certainly forget it for ourselves as adults we should. yeah definitely need you need that hour of just slowly winding down of having you know dimmed lights and you know maybe slow music and and just maybe gentle movement or I don't know, meditation, whatever it is that works for you. But we do need to just slowly wind down, which we kind of up, 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 you know, most of the time. We are. And at the moment, it's not surprising. I think, um, you know, I'm seeing a lot of lack of sleep or poor sleep or disturbed sleep yeah, happening at the moment. Um, and, and it's one of the pillars of good health, you know, along with making sure you're eating healthy food and you're getting some exercise, getting a good night's sleep is just as important yeah. for us to stay healthy. Um, so anything that helps support that sleep, a great little trick to do at night if you want to use essential oils to help you sleep is you can use a diffuser in the bedroom, but I like to not leave it on all night, personally. What I like to do is to put a couple of drops on a tissue and tuck it inside my pillowcase. Oh. And that way it's there all night. Um, and you can use things like lavender again for that. Uh, but I also love marjoram, which is a great sedative oil. And also Ylang Ylang is another one that I really like for night time as well. I'm going to do that. I'm yeah, so it's, it's really nice because it just very subtly drifts through for the whole night while you're asleep. So it, it really it really does help. Oh, what a beautiful idea. I so <laughs> love that. I wish I'd thought about that earlier. Okay, so, I mean, we, you have covered a lot of it, but um, is there anything you want to sort of expand on this question on how, how is it best we choose essential oils? Do we start with who we are constitutionally or what mind set we're in or emotional state or where do you begin with this i think again as i said before i think it's about checking in with yourself um or checking in with your house um with your home with the, with your space and yeah. seeing what it is that you actually need are you looking to deal with some maybe some specific symptoms as we spoke about with the respiratory system are we talking about 
just calming the atmosphere, maybe energizing the atmosphere. You know, if we don't have to get out of the house in the morning, are we really getting going as early? Maybe we struggle to get started. Yes. Um, or it might be something as simple as if you're working from home, maybe just getting yourself into the mindset to work and not get distracted by the things that are around you at home. Because just the act of going into a workplace can put you in the right state of mind to achieve what you need to in the day and when you're in this you're trapped in the space which normally you associate with your leisure time it might be harder to get that focus and concentration happening so you can use all essential oils like rosemary uh, lemon peppermint are all great oils to use for concentration mm -hmm. and if you uh, if you bring those out each time you actually decide you're going to work mm -hmm. you can actually kind of start to trick your brain into getting into the right headspace, so to speak. So, so it, 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 it... Yeah, it's true, because you need to kind of shift uh, states. Yeah. Different activities, you need to be in a different state, a different space. You know, and I mean, I work from home, so I've got my, all my, whatever I do, you know, to get myself ready. Um, and yes, if you're not used to that, you have to create that, you know, yeah. <laughs> Not to mention the distractions that we get surrounded by. You know, you yeah. might have the kids there, you might have your partner there, you might have pets. Um, not to mention, you know, that basket of washing in the corner that you haven't folded yet or, um, you know, other things that you just rather be doing than whatever it is you're supposed yeah. to be doing. What yeah. my daughter calls, what my, my daughter calls procrastinating. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But, you know, yeah, so definitely for a lot of us, that would be a shift, you know. I mean, Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. For me, this has kind of been my life for, like, for, forever, basically, you know, juggling homeschooling kids. I mean, they're adults now, so it's not like that anymore, but it used to be. It was mm -hmm. like juggling them and the house and my work and so on and so forth. Um, but, yeah, it's what I like doing. So that was good. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're, 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 you've obviously got very practiced at making those um, okay. distinctions, Prisa, and I think uh, not all of us have those skills as yet, but we're, we're obviously all having to work on it and develop that now. You can develop them, and it depends very much on the line of work. You know, if you're self-employed and you are here to somehow support others in their lives and improve their lives, the more we're anchored in our purpose, in our heart's calling, the more you, you, you find ways to get focused because it's just an, a burning desire within you. Mm. So, I, I mean, I just love working. It's just what I like doing. It doesn't even feel like work. Um, but yeah, that's different. I can see that if you go to work suddenly, you're home, you have to find other ways. Hmm. And it's finding those rituals. So in the same way we have a yes. bedtime routine, yes. you develop that work routine. You develop, it's like it's little rituals that we develop yes. during the day. And, it, and you might have, have always had a ritual. Maybe it's traveling to work a certain way, picking up a coffee from a particular coffee yes. shop before you go into the office. All these little things, they are rituals and they are habits and they all link one to the next. We just have to find new ones now. Exactly. And sometimes essential oils and the aromas from essential oils can help, help us bridge some of those links and develop those habits. I think so. You know, I noticed that with the oils you've created for us, you know, depending on what shift I want to experience, my mental, emotional shift or what I want to, you know, what I need in that day, you know, because sometimes I shoot videos and sometimes I work on projects, sometimes I write. They all have need a different space and different state in a sense. So, yeah, to be able to choose, that's how I want to feel, what essential oils might support me in that, I think that's really great. Mm, I think that, that that's definitely the right way to go about it. I think yes, is to connect with yourself, decide, see, observe in yourself what you need, yes. and then approach it from that point of view. Exactly. So it's about knowing yourself a little bit more. You know, it is getting to, or getting to know you. Exactly. I think in some ways, this is one of the gifts of this uh, international virus that's going on. Is we have more time. Mm. And it is actually giving us opportunities to put our focus where we haven't been for a long time. You know, maybe things that have been putting off for aeons, you know, whether it is making time to be with your partner, like really be with your partner, really connect with him or really connect with your children. Right. Or really dive in and to go, OK, I have been wanting to change jobs for so long maybe now is the time whatever it is you know there's we all have things that we've put off and all of a sudden there is now this time this pause in time and it's so perfect to use that for it yes i agree definitely yeah. so now can essential oils actually protect us from coronavirus wendy 
This is a really tricky question in a way, um, and it's something that's been a lot of discussion about. The reality is we, the answer, well, the simple answer is we don't know. Um, there really hasn't been any research with regard to essential oils and this coronavirus for us to be able to say absolutely it, it nothing, it, you know, it, it does or it doesn't work. Um, we do know how essential oils can behave with some viruses, not all, but some. Viruses are tricky things to research for a whole variety of scientific reasons I won't go into today. But um, uh, we do know that they can have some effects. What I do urge people to, to think about is that not to use essential oils as your sole line of defence. They can help support doing other things. They can act as an extra, but I wouldn't be relying on them as much as I love them. I wouldn't be relying on them alone. There is a reason why we have a list of things that we're supposed to do to protect ourselves because, well, you know yourself, Rosanna, it doesn't matter what the problem is in life, there's rarely one single magic bullet action to fix it. It's usually a multi-pronged approach. In my life, for sure. <laughs> so that's why we're told to do things like wash your hands and don't touch your face and stay at home. And if you do have to go out, make sure you maintain that social distance. We're told to do all these different things because one of them on their own is not going to fix it. No. And the same goes with essential oils. So it's important to understand that there are some antiviral oils or that oils that have antiviral actions, um, but there's no guarantee that they will work against this virus. So don't rely on them solely. Having said that, if you want to add some into your, the, you know, maybe you use a, um, if you use a liquid soap to wash your hands, you can add some essential oils to that. So things like, Probably my favourites at the moment would be eucalyptus tea tree, so two good Aussie oils there, but also uh, lemongrass and some of the other citrus oils like lemon or sweet orange or maybe pine. And, you know, if you know, some of those oils are ones we've mentioned already for other things. So that's why I was saying that essentials, just because you use them for one thing, doesn't mean they're not doing other things at the same time. So any of those added to that or added to your cleaning routine around the house, they can add a bit of an extra boost, but we need to make sure that we don't rely on them solely. We remember that there's other things we have to do as well. That's um, a good I, point about the, the eucalyptus oil and the, the tea tree oil. You know, because I remember um, when we went to India to study 20 uh, something years ago and my son was only three, four years old, Basically, I had it in my pocket the entire time. I had tea tree oil. And periodically, I would say, okay, hands. He would <laughs> give his little hands to me and I would put the oil on his hands just to keep them clean because children touch everything. Yeah. You know, well, well, that's right. Although I would caution against neat essential oil on the hands, especially for kids. It's not something to do all the time. <laughs> but, you know, when we know better, we do better. Um, so I, but yeah, that actually mentioning hands, that actually brings me to a really important point because I have had a myriad of inquiries about people wanting to make hand sanitizer with essential oils. Now, I, I will have to say there are a lot of recipes during the rounds, particularly on the internet, which rely on those essential oils as being the active ingredient. And they're really not going to do what a lot of people are claiming. It's very important to understand that hand sanitizers need to have 60% at minimum alcohol to be effective against this virus. That's one of the things we know works. We know hand washing works. Soap and water, that's all you need. And if you're at home most of the time, soap and water, washing hands with soap and water properly is um, the best thing that you can use. Um, if you have to go out and about, or if you're one of these people working, you know, one of our frontline workers who's working in healthcare or um, in the supermarkets or one of the truck drivers, delivery drivers, you know, delivering all our, all our goods at the moment, um, it may be, there may be situations when those people do need hand sanitizers. So they're the people we should leave them for, frankly. Um, but, you know, if you are going to use one or make one, it needs to have at least that much um, alcohol in it. You can add a bit of essential oil as well, give it an extra little bit of oomph, but um, don't rely on the essential oils on their own. Good point. Mm. Yeah, really good point. That's really good to know. And yeah, I mean, there is a shortage at the moment um, getting sanitizer. So I think that's why people have gone to searching on the internet what else you can do, you know, I'm guessing. 
I think so. I think I think there's also this illusion that somehow hand sanitizers are better than soap and water, and the reality is they're actually not. They're actually a, a second choice. They're a backup if nothing else. Yes. The um, soap and water works because of the way viruses are. Yes. So actually breaks that out of out of um, surface of a virus down. Uh, so it's no longer viable, and then the water washes it away off your hands, whereas a sand sanitizer will break down the virus, um, but not quite, it, it doesn't take it off your hands. So soap and water, I think, I think it's very hard for a lot of people to appreciate that soap and water can be such a powerful thing. <laughs> It's true. I mean, we, we always we always think of the complex things, you know, um, but often it's actually the really simple stuff that has got the power. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sim simple, simple stuff. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Stay inside as much as possible. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, my God. There's so much. There's so much information in this. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. I've learned a lot. And I'm going to listen to this for sure again, you know, um, and go, okay, which essential oils do I have already and which ones can I go and get? I think, yeah, brilliant. And so we, for, for our listeners, we definitely, um, you will find the link below this video. So you can find Wendy, um, an essence of well-being. So if you need any essential oils, um, they, can, they can go to your website. Is that true? That's exactly right. We have, because of the current situation, had to close our showroom in Mornington. Um, just, it just wasn't possible to keep yeah. it safe enough for everybody, both customers and, and, and us as well. Uh, but we are still online and we still do, and we deliver everywhere. So people don't have to go out. They can actually, um, they can actually order online and have it delivered to their door. So simple as. <laughs> and, and if you've got essential oils at home, there's often... Um, there's a lot of things, different things that you can do with them. So if you have a look on the website, there's lots and lots of information. Uh, my blog is on there as well. So uh, it's got some little how to so little projects you can try at home uh, and lots of other things if you want to um, expand your knowledge. Beautiful. That's perfect. Now, going back to the fact that uh, the virus impacts the lungs really strongly, mm -hmm. And uh, in, in, it is a time for us to be so separate and sometimes that can bring in loneliness. So think about things that really feed your heart, um, bring that joy into your life, whether it's putting the music on and dance with your children when they're home or um, making a delicious meal. Just look at it. What is it for you? Um, and if you're stuck for ideas, you'll also find the link for the self love reset um, there are five days you can do every day. There's a new practice of ways you can love yourself and fill your heart um, to get you through this time. So, yeah, thank you so much, Wendy. Really enjoyed the time with you today. Is there anything else, one last thing you would like to share? Uh, look, I think just um, have a look at what essential oils you may already have in your house. Uh, and, and just um, use, it, use it as an opportunity to, to connect and, and really just to get to know yourself a little bit. But I think above everything else, I think what we all need to do at the moment is just to be kind, kind to ourselves and kind to each other. We're all walking this road um, together. We're all, it's new for everybody and we'll all have our good days and our bad days. And I think uh, if we can be kind to ourselves on those bad days and enjoy the good ones. Absolutely. I totally agree. And be patient with each other, yeah. you know, because yes, you know, we see funny behavior. So just be patient. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Thank you everyone. And I look forward to speaking to you again next time. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.